In this video, we're going to create the third and final setup for our part. For the third setup, we're going to tip the part on its end to add the hole. The difference with this third setup is we can no longer use the same datum at the machine because this part is far taller and no longer on parallel bars. So in this video, we're going to begin discussing fixture offsets. If you plan on following along, you should have your copy of part 4.2 open. Because we have the most control over our work coordinate system by first creating a solid works coordinate system, I'm going to begin by selecting utilities on the cam tab and creating a coordinate system. With the part tipped up on its end and the face with the hole showing, we can select the back left corner as the vertex for our origin. The x-axis will be defined by the short back edge and the z-axis can be perpendicular to the face that has the hole in it. We can then flip the x-axis and the z-axis until the x is pointing along the back face, the y is pointing away from the part, and the z-axis is pointing up at the spindle. With our coordinate system correct, select OK, and we can select Job to create the new job based on this coordinate system. Again, we're going to zero out the fixture offsets, and we can skip over the working coordinate system area. Because we had that coordinate system selected when we started the job, so it is already defined, and move right down to post processing where we can control the fixture or work offset. We're going to go ahead and skip over a program name and program comment because we will discuss it in greater detail when we begin looking at the program language. The main thing of importance is the work coordinate system. A value of 0 or a value of 1 use the first work coordinate system that your machine has. A value of 2 is going to use the second work coordinate system. So let's enter 2 so that this work coordinate system at the machine is different than the work coordinate system for the first two setups. Typically, the second work coordinate system is going to be G55. But the reason that we're entering a 0, 1, or a 2 is because not all machines use G54 and G55 as their fixture offset values. Unfortunately, this is not something that machine tool builders have standardized on. Multiple work coordinate system offsets is used for high production environments where you're running multiple instances of the same part on the machine at the same time. So, with our work offset set, let's go ahead and select OK, and this third job is set up. But before we bring this video to a close, I'd like to give you a quick tip for when you're working on the back side of a part. Something that can often be frustrating is if you activate the top view, it's going to look at the top of the part. Also, if you select the face you're programming and look normal to, it's not necessarily looking normal to the part with the X and Y axis pointing in the correct direction. This makes it very confusing to visualize how the part is going to look in the machine. So a good way to work around that is to adjust the standard views in SOLIDWORKS. Let's start by rotating our view so that we're looking at it with the X and Y axis going in the correct direction. I'll do this by holding ALT and my arrow key to rotate the view around. Now with my X and Y axes pointing in the correct direction, I'll tap the space bar single select the top view and update my standard views. SOLIDWORKS is going to warn us that it's changing the views and we're going to say OK. Now when I activate a top view, I'm looking down on this face that I've reassigned as my top view with my coordinate system pointing in the correct direction. Also if I activate a nice and if I activate an isometric view, again, we're looking at the part 
in the orientation it's going to be in when it's in the machine. When you're done programming this side, simply press the space bar and reset the standard views. Select Yes to return them to their defaults. And now when I select the top view, I'm looking down at the top of the part again. I hope you'll find that little tip useful when you're spending a long time programming the backside of a part. With that said, you can now move on to the next videos where we're going to begin discussing different strategies for defining stock.